Guys, what is going on? Welcome to the third quarter. Welcome to a new week. It is, in fact, Monday. And on today's podcast, my friends, I've got a really interesting thing to share with you. You know, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I learned at the airport for eight hours and on the tarmac for several hours over the weekend. Let's get ready to jump into it. There are over 32 million businesses in the U.S. and over 90% of them will never break seven figures in annual sales. So how do we as entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs break into that seven figures club? This podcast will relentlessly share the secrets, strategies, and tactics I've used to create three multi seven figures businesses and bring in even more successful entrepreneurs than me to share their inspirational stories and tactics to success. You can create your dream business in life right now. So buckle up and let's go. All right, guys. Hope you're having a magnificent 2022. And by the way, I was actually going to be, uh, I was actually set to interview a uh, real estate uh, uh, fundraising group. They've, uh, I think, raised $100 million in capital, have like uh, five, 6,000 units for $600 million, doing really well. But for whatever reason, they did not show up at the podcast that they scheduled and requested me on the podcast. But that's fine. We're going to make do and deliver a wonderful message anyway, even without them being on. So we've got some exciting things uh, going on right now here at, uh, you know, this is the Seven Figures Club podcast. Uh, the purpose of this podcast is to help others, business owners, entrepreneurs, side hustlers to join the Seven Figures Club. Less than 5% of businesses actually do. Some people say 7%. Let's call it 5 to 7% of business owners never reach a million dollars in, in uh, annual income. And it's a very unfortunate thing because they work so hard and they certainly want to. And that's why we bring you guys amazing seven, eight, nine figure guests to teach you about different subjects and topics that you can, you know, integrate and implement, incorporate into your business to join the Seven Figures Club. And today's podcast, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk a little bit about the weekend. So a lot of you know, I've got uh, five kids and my second oldest is my only daughter, Kayla. She's a talented uh, dancer. She's got all sorts of, uh, you know, uh, physical fitness skills that most people don't. She's incredibly flexible. She can pull her, you know, back foot into a straight, uh, whatever those are called, like a back split is what they call it in dancing. And so she, she can do back handsprings, a lot of different things. She's been dancing since she was three. Anyway, the last couple of years, she spent more time kind of helping my wife out uh, and I uh, taking care of some of our younger kids as we were, you know, busy doing things, uh, going across the, the country. And uh, for example, we just had our 20 year anniversary. And so my wife and I went to the Caribbean 10 day cruise, awesome time. And, and my daughter really helped out taking care of the kids. So so she's always wanted to go to a concert by the artist known as Halsey. Halsey's a great uh, alternative uh, rock. She, she will mix in a little bit of country, a little bit of alternative rock, a little bit of pop. She is a great artist. We, my daughter and I really like her. My wife actually doesn't love her nearly, nearly as much as I do. So oddly enough, my daughter and I, I'm like, all right, Kayla's been working so hard, doing so much for her family. I'm going to get her tickets to the Halsey concert. Problem, it's not here in Utah. The concert was actually in Irvine, California. So it's about uh, 35 miles from LAX. And so no problem. You know, we got, we got our two concert tickets. Uh, we got a great deal on flights, hotel. And then, oh, hey, let's, let's go to Disneyland for, you know, a day uh, right after. And we'll be back in, you know, two or three days. Nice, quick, easy trip. And a wonderful experience for her. So we're super excited. We got everything ready. And on Saturday, we uh, got all of our luggage put together. My wife dropped us off at the airport. And uh, we went to our favorite uh, you know, location, the airport, Cafe Rio. Got our Cafe Rio for lunch. We got the burritos that we could, because we probably weren't going to have time to stop for dinner. We're going to have to drop our stuff off at the hotel and go straight to the concert when we got there. So get on the plane. We're on the tarmac and all of a sudden things start to slow down. The plane starts to get really hot. I'm talking like 85 degrees. Everyone's sweating, uncomfortable, looking around what's going on. The AC is not working. And generally that happens, you know, when they're getting ready to take off. And, 
And all of a sudden, 30 minutes goes by and, oh, well, we've got to have maintenance look at the uh, engine real quick. All of a sudden, an hour goes by. We're on the tarmac for an hour. It's 105 degrees in Utah, pretty hot uh, in Salt Lake City. And eventually, they're like, oh, sorry, guys. Uh, maintenance says the engine's throwing a code. It's overheating. That's not good. We don't want an overheating engine 30,000 feet up, right? So we're going to have to deplane and figure out what's going on. So we all get off the plane. Everybody's kind of bummed for a little bit. But hey, you know, there's, there's got to, they're going to do something. They're going to try and get this fixed. And, and uh, the guys there with JetBlue, usually we fly Delta. Unfortunately, there weren't any Delta flights direct to LA. So we had to go with JetBlue. And that's when the problem started. So there we are. And, you know, patiently waiting and boy, we can't find any other flights and we're getting concerned now because it's an, an hour's passed. Now another hour's passed. We're going to be late for this concert if we can get up into the air. So we're trying to figure out, well, maybe we'll just miss the opening acts. We'll still make it for Halsey. This can still work. My daughter is just focusing on solutions. Everybody with JetBlue is trying really hard to find solutions. Everybody's staying open unreasonably optimistic in the face of this adversity controlling what they can control so there we are and then we're about ready to have to cancel everything so it's just not going to be there's no not going to be any chance of making it the last second hey we're going so everybody runs up and we all get on the plane again and we're all super excited we're giving high fives hey same seats everybody all right everybody's so super excited and uh, we all get in our seats and you know, they're doing all their final checks. It looks good. They get to the tarmac and we are literally just waiting for our turn to take off. And right as we're about to, they do one more check and lo and behold, that engine code pops up again. They turn the engines off and now it's 90 degrees. It's, it's hot as hell in this airplane. <laughs> and they actually end up saying, sorry, guys, we're going to have to take the plane to the shop. We're not going to be able to take off. There's no other planes available. Very sorry, but we're always, you know, we're obviously better safe than sorry. So I'm sitting back. I'm bummed for Kayla. And I'm, I'm wondering, how is she going to react to this? And I look around and there's another dad with his daughter and they flew in from Orlando and they're going to LA too to go to the K-pop concert. It's a real big deal, I guess. And she is sobbing uncontrollably, hysterically, screaming. And then there's other people crying and just people are just really frustrated and upset at this point. Understandably so, still we're, we're way better off, you know, being safe and not 35,000 feet up with, a, you know, an engine that dies on us. So we're grateful for that. And I'm watching to see how Kayla reacts. And Kayla, you know, stays positive. She realizes we can only control what we can control the whole time she's been focused on solutions. And she stays unreasonably optimistic in the face of monster adversity, doesn't throw a fit, doesn't complain, doesn't criticize, doesn't you know blame JetBlue. Obviously, JetBlue is going to lose money and have to cancel this. This isn't what they wanted. But hey, we're always better off with a safe plane, right? So it's interesting. We, we had a plane there. Again, we're not going to make the concert. She starts helping me to cancel everything, see if we can get our money back. Luckily, we had insurance on the tickets in case we couldn't make it. And, and she's just laughing with this uh, group from Australia that wanted to go to a concert there too in LA. And, and there's this rapper, uh, his name is uh, Winnie the Jrou, J-R-O-O. -O, and uh, he's got like 100,000 followers on Instagram, tattoos all over his face, body, really cool guy. And he's laughing and she's laughing and we're all just laughing, all of us together. And, you know, just uh, controlling what we can control. There's no need to throw a monster fit. And so what that brings back to me is just the importance of values and principles. And in a day and age where values and principles don't tend to exist, how many times, you know, do you see someone who something doesn't go their way and they throw this massive fit, they start hysterically, maybe screaming or yelling. In fact, uh, one of the guys in front of us was really upset. And again, the JetBlue people are doing what they can, but they, they can't control that engine not working. And certainly it's not what anybody wanted. It's not ideal, but it's the problem that we're dealing with. We have to focus on finding solutions. And most people in that case just want to do two things. They want to blame somebody. 
They want to dive into that problem and settle in there. And they don't want to move on to the success solutions that are right around the corner. And so Kayla and I were not able to go to LA, to Disney, to the Halsey concert. But you know what? We'll find tickets to a Halsey or another concert, uh, you know, star that she likes. And it will be a great experience. We have a lot to be grateful for. We were able to, you know, take uh, Kayla and our kids to uh, Mexico, to Riviera Maya, just uh, in April, not that long ago. So certainly nothing to complain about on our end. But again, what I was impressed with was how she dealt with the adversity, how she apparently has learned, because you never know. I mean, sometimes you're teaching values and principles to your children, and you're not sure they're really listening to them. You're not sure they're really implementing these in their lives. And so for us, you know, I can think of times where I've been guilty. I didn't react the right way. I didn't focus on those solutions. I, instead of controlling everything that I could and assuming control and responsibility over my life, I, you know, there've been times where I did blame others, where it was always someone else's fault other than my own, where there's a lot of complaining and making love to the problem instead of focusing on the solution. And a lot of that also comes back to doing what you say you're going to do, Right following through on your promises, on your uh, commitments that you've made is super vital and super important. So that's just what I wanted to share with you guys a little bit today of the importance of values and principles and how important is to like write them down, have those values and principles up in your house. Uh, You know, my wife's got values and principles on our wall. We've got them here in the office. That was the first thing I did Because for the first uh, six months of our company, Seven Figures Funding, we were working from home and there were about uh, five or six of us. And, you know, eventually, hey, guys, it's time we got to get an office. We're going to get more done together, working together. We got the office. And the first thing uh, that we did was we got, uh, you know, our values and principles printed out in a really nice uh, framed picture frames. And we put them all out you know, on the wall. So everybody knew, hey, this is what we stand for. This is how we live. These are, this is what, you know, regulates the decisions that we make. And it makes it so easy when you do have values and principles that you've built your life upon, it makes it easy to make that decision. Well, you know, are we going to do what we said we were going to do? You're damn right we are, because it's a value that we have on our wall. Are we going to work hard relentlessly and focus on solutions? Absolutely. We're going to throw a monster fit and complain and criticize and blame everyone else. No, nope, we're going to control what we can control. We're going to stay unreasonably optimistic in the face of adversity. We're going to move forward to the next solution and get over this obstacle that we're currently you know, bumping into. And that, my friends, is so paramount. It's so paramount today in a society because the society we live in now is one in which we've stopped, we stopped uh, worshiping the right heroes and we're worshiping the wrong heroes. So the wrong heroes are the whiners and the complainers, the AOCs, the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez Congressional Representative of the State of New York, who's so good at whining and complaining, and she's made it attractive. And her following is building on Instagram because she's so good at whining and complaining. Because of social media, it's never been more popular to whine and complain. And now everybody, instead of being in you know, a contest to achieve success, to help others, to make a true impact. It's people are in a hurry to figure out who can be the biggest victim. Oh, I was a bigger victim. Oh, I was treated poorly. I was, you know, in uh, in a group where uh, we just uh, had less opportunities. And it's all about being a victim. And, you know, one of my mentors, Ed Milet, says this really well. He says, hey, does it help you? Does it serve you to believe that and to be that and play that victim card? Or does it serve you better to say, hey, in spite of the difficulty, adversity, and I'm not saying there's not injustice, it's every single day when my kids ask, say it's not fair, I said it's never going to be, guys. It will never be fair. Life will never be fair. I guarantee you. Nothing will be fair. But what is going to be be fair is how you choose to react, how you choose to deal with adversity and difficulty, and whether you want to focus on solutions, whether you want to blame others, whether you want to assume control of a situation yourself, that, my friends, is up to you. So my invitation to you is to assume control of everything, to live by the right values and principles, to inspire your team and to lead others, whether it's your friends, family, your business, if you're a manager at work, if you're an entrepreneur, small business owner like most of the audience, then that's certainly what you're going to 
do. And you know what else is super important about values and principles? You better live them. Like there is nothing that will help you, you know, lose credibility faster with your business, with your friends, with your family, with your children, than not following through and doing what you said you were going to do by not living by those values and principles, by not following through on the commitments and the things that you said you were going to do. That's why for me, it's super important to never preach anything that I don't practice. Like if I'm not practicing it, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be preaching it. Now I, I make a, make an effort here to uh, try and use the best language, but I don't always succeed with that. So my kids know they're never going to hear me at home say, Oh, don't you ever curse. Don't you say that bad word? Cause I can't say that. Cause sometimes I do curse. Sometimes I do use language that I shouldn't, but I'm not going to tell others that they should be living how I'm not, but everything that I do do, you can be damn sure I'm going to make the, you know, uh, encouraging invitation that they take action towards that, whether it's taking care of their mind, whether it's getting up early, whether it's getting that workout in in the morning, whether it's getting your mind right, your body right, whether it's really putting the work in and being relentless and, you know, not negotiating, not uh, giving in on things that you've committed to, following through and focusing on those solutions. Those are things that are going to move the needle. All right, guys. Well, that is today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you found value in the Seven Figures Club podcast, please share the show with other entrepreneurs, small business owners, side hustlers, or just anybody who wants to live a much better life than they currently are living. They want to create an epic life for their children. They want to you know, grow a business. They want to join this club. If that's what you want, share this podcast with others. Take action, live by values and principles. God bless you. And we'll see you next time on the Seven Figures Club podcast. Are you looking for more seven figure secrets, content, or even how you can launch your own recession proof business? Then check out sevenfigures.com. That's the digit seven, F I G U R E S.com, where we share more videos, stories, strategies, funding solutions, entrepreneurial education, and even the secret business type that's recession proof. Thank you for listening, and if you're finding value in our podcast, please give us a five-star and invite others to join the club.